Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV and welcome to the latest episode of the Player Debate. And today, this is episode three and we're going to just talk about goalkeepers. Now, as we know, at Manchester City, we have Edison as our number one. We've got Claudio Bravo as our number two and we've got Scott Carson um, filling some sort of role that we're still not <laughs> sure of what it is. But uh, we always have a third goalkeeper. Now, we know... And if you look at the uh, episode one, which is all about players on loan, we know we've got, we're really, we've got three keepers out on loan. We've got Daniel Grimshaw, who is at Hemel Hempstead Town, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, he's going to be coming back to Manchester City any, anytime soon. We've got Ari Muric at Nottingham Forest, who's only played around four games this season. And we've got Zach Steffen, who is on loan at Fortuna Dusseldorf. So, Rather than rather than look at Murich and add Murich to these particular uh, stats in this video, uh, I did concentrate on Zach Steffen. And rather than just looking at stats for Edison Bravo and Zach Steffen, I thought, well, let me take a selection of the top keepers in the world. Now, I couldn't pick everybody. So if there are others out there that you think, oh, well, what about this keeper at Ajax? Or what? I couldn't do everybody. So I just picked three who are considered right up there in world football. And I, I picked Jan Oblak, uh, I picked Ter Stegen, and I picked Alisson uh, as well. And what we're going to do is I'm going to look at their statistics um, for domestic football this season. And again, uh, I could have picked 20 different stats. And one stat which might seem very obvious to pick would be saves. But then again, I was looking at the, um, the stats and thought, well, you know, you've got the likes of Zach Steffen playing in uh, in the Bundesliga. Uh, Fortuna Dusseldorf tend to uh, get attacked quite a lot, uh, which uh, a lot of shots, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you look at Alisson, uh, you look at City with Edison, uh, you look at Barcelona, you look at the others and tend to some of the bigger bigger teams tend to have a far less uh, shots on target against the goalkeeper so I thought I'm going to discount shot stopping um so I just wanted to select two of the stats so I selected one crossing uh, and uh, how do these uh, keepers deal with crosses into the area but the biggest stat of all which is the main one because of the way Manchester City play is passing and I wanted to take a close look at the passing stats now the crossing, when we come to look at the stats, again, if you want to look at some of the other stats that are on the screen for each keeper, you can pause the video, zoom in, and you can take a look at some of the other stats if you want to. Now, with regards to crossing, um, again, it will break it down into how many crosses were put into the area, how many um, crosses were saved by each individual keeper, and then give you a percentage of that. With regards to the passing stats, it will show you short, medium, long. Short being passes under five yards, uh, medium being passes between five and 25 yards, which as we know the way Manchester City and many teams around the world play now is a very, very important part. Um, and long passes is over 25 yards. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to start off with three of the keepers uh, that are not associated with Manchester City. Um, we'll look at Jan Oblak, we'll look at Pe uh, Ter Stegen, we'll look at Alisson, then we'll look at Zach Steffen's stats, we'll look at Claudio Bravo's stats, and we'll look at Edison's stats, and then we'll have a quick discussion at the end as to, will Bravo leave, and how important is Bravo at this moment in time to Manchester City? So, let's kick it off and uh, take a look at, first off, who we've still got within the EDS at Manchester City. Well, we've got Gavin, Gavin Bazunu uh, and Thomas Scott, who are currently the two keepers in the EDS. We've also got keepers, obviously, in the academy level, which is Louis Molden, the son of Paul, and Lewis Thomas. Now, we can't see any of those stepping in to even be the third choice keeper, if I'm being honest. They are well behind the likes of potentially Murich or Zach Steffen coming to Manchester City. So we're going to discount those to start with. But we are going to start looking at the stats and the first one we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at the crossing stats for each keeper and then we'll take a look at the passing stats for each keeper so the first one we're going to take a look at is Jan Oblak and his crossing stats so here you can see if you want to again if you want to um, if you want to zoom in pause it do whatever you like feel free to do so but if we take Jan Oblak for with regards to crosses 
you can see there it says uh, attempted, stopped, and stopped percentage. With all black, attempted crosses 713, actual stopped crosses were 60, and the stopped percentage gives him uh, an 8.4% uh, in there. So uh, fairly decent when it comes to stopping crosses is Jan Oblak. Next up, we'll take a look at uh, the crossing of Ter Stegen. This is Ter Stegen's crosses. So again, if we take a look um, at the crosses section there, Ter attempted crosses into the penalty area, 702. Actual stopped crosses by the keeper, 56, gives him a stop percentage of 8%, which again is quite decent. Let's take a look at Alisson's crossing, um, stopping crosses, let's call it. Uh, and if we take Alisson and his statistics when it comes to crosses, well, you can see here attempted crosses by the opposition, 305. Actual stopped crosses by Allison is only 21, which gives him a pretty poor stop um, percentage of 6.9% compared to 8.4% by Oblak and uh, Testagen at 8% as well. So that's Allison's crossing. Now let's take a look at Zach Stefan. Uh, if we take a look at his crossing stats here, you can see um, if we go across and look at those, then the crosses for um, Zach Stefan attempted crosses into the penalty area, 337. Stopped crosses by the keeper uh, is 27, which gives him a stop percentage success rate of 8%, uh, which is the same as Ter Stegen's. So that's uh, Zach Stefan. Let's take a look at our number two, which is Claudio Bravo. Uh, so if we bring up Bravo stats here, we can see uh, when it comes to crosses uh, attempted into the area, uh, bearing in mind he's not played anywhere near the games that Edison has, 143 actual stopped crosses, four, which gives him a stop percentage uh, of only 2.8%, which is not great at all. Now, is that because of his height? Uh, is that because of players going for those balls and you know thinking well i'm far taller than um uh, bravo is is it the fact he doesn't command his area as well as uh, some of those other keepers but that's not very good uh, a very good percentage rate if we take a look at edison however uh when it comes to crossing uh, and we take a look at his statistics well crosses attempted by the opposition 328 actual stop crosses 38 which gives edison a stop percentage, uh, a stop, a successful stop percentage of 11.6, which far outweighs any of the other keepers um, in the um, other leagues, uh, in particular the ones I've actually selected um, with the likes of Oblak, with Ter Stegen, with Allison. So we know he's a beast, he's huge, he's absolutely huge. So when it comes to crossing um, Edison out of those I've selected, by by far um, has a higher successful percentage rates when it comes to stopping shots. So the next thing we're going to look at is passing, and which I think is extremely important. So let's go back and pick our first goalkeeper that we originally looked at, and we're going to take a look at uh, Oblak, Jan Oblak's uh, passing uh, statistics. And uh, if we bring them up here, uh, you can see here we've got short, medium and long. Remember short passes are uh, under five yards, medium are five to 25 yards, and long is over 25 yards. So if we take a look, the short passes, um, completed six, attempted eight, that gives him uh, a completion percentage of 75%. With regards to medium, which is five to 25 yards, completed 1,410, attempted 1,420, gives him a pass completion percentage of 99.3 which is uh, which is exceptional. We take a look at long passes over 25 yards, completed 889, attempted 1,221, which gives him a completion ratio of 72%. So that's uh, Jan uh, Oblak's passing statistics. Next up, we're going to take a look at uh, Ter Stegen's passing. We'll bring that up on the screen now. I'll 
bring up the stats uh, on mine as well here. So you can see here, short, medium, and long. Completed short passes, 15. Attempted, 18. Gives them a completion ratio of 83.3%. 83 we take a look at medium. Completed passing, 12, uh, to what, 2,110. Attempted, 2,125, which gives him a pass completion between 25 and 25 yards of 99.3%. That is uh, that is the same as uh, Jan Oblak, which is uh, is exceptional stats. We look at long passing, completed 1,689, attempted 2,372, which gives him a completion percentage of 71.2%. Uh, now, Oblaks was just slightly higher at 72.8 than Ter Stegen's. So let's take a look at Allison's stats for passing. Let's face it, the old claim is a wonderful passer of the ball. Do his stats bear that out? So let's take a look at uh, passing. So we've got short, medium and long again. So under five yards, completed two, attempted three, gave him a Pass, successful pass completion of 66.7. Medium completed 794, attempted 803, which gives him a pass completion between 5 and 25 yards. Successful pass completion percentage of 98.9. So again, less than Oblak and Ter Stegen. So that's uh, Allison's passing. Let's take a look at Zach Steffen's passing then and see how the kid has done. Let's face it, this could be an important one uh, when it comes to could he potentially be the number two at Manchester City. So short, medium and long again. Short, completed passes five, attempted six, gives him a completion ratio of a percentage of 83 percent When it comes to medium, which is the big one, completed 729, attempted 740, gives him a completion uh, percentage of 98.5, which is um, less than Allison and uh, significantly less than uh, Testagen and Oblek. When it comes to long passes, 799 completed. Attempted 1243 gives him a completion ratio a percentage of 64.3, which is significantly less than the other three keepers. So let's take a look at our number two, and that is Claudio Bravo's passing. And as we can see here with Claudio Bravo's passing, uh, short passes, uh, attempted three, uh, completed three, attempted three. Completion percentage uh, uh, is 100%. Now, 5 to 25 yards, medium, completed 500, attempted 504, gives him a, uh, a completion percentage of 99.2, which is only just 0.1% under the likes of Oblak and Ter Stegen. Long passes completed 359, attempted 526 gives him a completion percentage of 68.3, which is uh, better than Stefan's, but slightly uh, less than the likes of Alison Oblak and Ter Stegen. So that's uh, our number two keeper when it comes to passing, uh, Claudio Bravo. But let's take a look at Edison's passing. Now, with Edison, if we take a look again at, uh, I can bring it up on my screen here. If we bring it up onto short, medium and long. Uh, with short, completed passes six, attempted eight, gives him a completion ratio of 75%. If we look at the medium, which is five to 25 yards, completed 1,410, attempted 1,420. A completion ratio of 99.3%, which puts him level with uh, Ter Stegen and Oblak, exactly the same, 99.3%. If we take a look at the long passes over 25 yards, completed 889, attempted 1,221, gives him a completion percentage of 72.8%, which again is joint first with the likes of Jan Oblak. So we can see Edison's stats are right up there. Number one out of those players for crossing, uh, and number one um, joint with the likes of Oblak and Ter Stegen in several of those categories. 
Um, so it just shows you how good Edison is uh, when it comes to passing stats in particular, which is extremely important. And some will say, yeah, but it's, you know, goals let in and things and conceded. And, you know, there's loads of variables to those things. Uh, lots and lots of variables to that. But there's some stats. Like I said, I could have selected 10, 20 keepers, but this video would have been two hours long. And I could have selected 10 different types of stats. And again, this video, the video could then have been four hours long. So I just selected crossing as a way of uh, looking at a one statistic and certainly passing, which is extremely important to Manchester City in the style of play. Not only City, but lots of teams now throughout the world play out from the back. And uh, five, five and five to 25 yard passing is extremely important. And thankfully, we've got two of the best goalkeepers in the world um, at passing. Uh, that is both Claudio Bravo and Edison. Now, Zach Steffen's stats don't quite add up to the likes of um, Claudio Bravo's and Edison's, but he is young. Uh, he can learn. In goalkeeper terms, he's very, very young. Um, but uh, what if Bravo does go in the summer? Do we trust bringing in a number two in our cup competitions and our uh, if Edison was to be injured, uh, bringing in the likes of Stefan. Should our, our Imurich be given an opportunity? Should we be bringing in the likes of, um, you know, Stefan as number two, Murich as number three? Or do we need an experienced keeper who's happy to be the number three and not play at all? Uh, which, let's face it, most like Taylor and others, they don't play. It's that simple. Um, give us your thoughts. Are there any other keepers? I know I could have looked at the Ajax keeper as well and, and lots of others. Is there anything, any others uh, that you think have got impressive stats when it comes to passing in particular uh, or have exceptional uh, shot stopping uh, statistics that you think could be a possibility uh, to come into Manchester City as our number two next season? Or do you think it's nailed on if Bravo leaves, Zach Stefan is going to be recalled and he's going to be our number two next season? So ah, there's so many different options. But what I wanted to do there was give you three outside of Manchester City who are considered up there as to be uh, one of the best keepers in world football. That was Jan Oblak, that's uh, uh, Ter Stegen and also Alisson uh, as well. But it shows you our current number one, current number two, are seriously, seriously good keepers when it comes to stats uh, and certainly passing in particular. But give us your thoughts. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon and make sure your settings are set to public not private. That way you'll be notified when all new videos arrive on the channel. But anyway, this is the player debate. This is episode three talking about goalkeepers. Don't forget, if you haven't watched episode two that we put on the channel, go over and take a look at that. That is all about who me, Martin, uh, Tom think potentially could leave Manchester City in the summer. And episode one is all about our lone players and where they are. Most of them are all, you know, the kids, but giving you a rundown of where they are and uh, how they're doing and statistics and where they've been on loan and things like that. So if you want to go over and check those videos out, please uh, make sure you do. We'll be bringing you loads more uh, on the channel. But anyway, don't forget, episode four will be coming out shortly. And that is all about right backs and centre backs and defensive midfielders. Take care and we'll see you soon. Set, 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 set.